Ukraine as an overseas visitor during the full-scale invasion. More than ever, my second visit was a place of contrasts. The horror and heartache inflicted by Russia's brutal full-scale invasion, visible everywhere and more than ever. But also visible, the defiance, the determination to defend the country and to resist what has been done to it and to keep its way of life and independence. Stop doing that. <laughs> it's defended on the front lines. It's defended away from the front lines by local volunteer organisations supplemented by international volunteers coming to do their part. And supported from beyond its borders as well. I saw it in Tbilisi at the start of the full-scale invasion in February 2022. In Moldova, in Refugee Support Europe's Refugee Dignity Centre and in the streets of Dublin where we stand with our Ukrainian community. So it was time to go back but before Lviv it was Kyiv. Once I negotiated the night train seating of course. <laughs> Approaching the capital you saw just how close it came to falling in those early weeks. Minutes out we pass Bucha. So what's Kyiv like today? Even during war, people have their freedom and their voice. Here, at the cradle of Ukrainian freedom, the Maidan, families of military protest for rights for them. Typical scene in an Eastern European city. Religious statues. With an addition of a bulletproof jacket. For years, if you come to Kyiv, you come here to St. Michael's Golden Domes uh, Cathedral part of the tourist trail. If you turn around from it now, it's transformed past this exhibit, which contrasts Warsaw the Second World War and Mario Paul and indeed the attacks on the Kiev region uh, today. Captured Russian military hardware from the attacks. It's not just Russian military equipment that's here. This vehicle was used by the Ukrainian army over a period of months with its defenders, many of whom, as we're told here, are no longer with us. Everywhere in Ukraine and here in Kyiv, you find examples as was well a expression, self-expression of Ukrainian pride, of Ukrainian nationality. If Russia thought they were going to bring a nationality to heel uh, with this invasion, oh my god, what a strategic mistake. And in all in such creative ways, this exhibit here, right below St. Sophia's uh, Cathedral, uh, marks the chronology of linguicide, Russification, how Russia tried to suppress through centuries Ukrainian language, Ukrainian identity, and how Ukrainians have resisted that to this day. A welcome change to the Mother Ukraine monument. Gone is the hammer and sickle, replaced by the Ukrainian coat of arms. This display of Soviet-era tanks shows military hardware produced in the 1950s, much of which has actually been used by Russia today in the invasion of Ukraine. Irony being, they were manufactured in Kharkiv in Ukraine. To Moscow. For those who haven't been paying attention, do you get it yet? This armoured personnel carrier belonging to Russia was destroyed in the Battle of Hostomel Airfield, which is credited by many as the turning point in the battle for Kiev to save Kiev when the Russian full-scale invasion began.
The war is not in Kyiv day to day, but it is everywhere in Kyiv. In creative exhibits, none as stark and as upsetting as this. A roll call of children of all ages killed by the Russians. But in the night, Kyiv remains the great city it always was, just a bit earlier due to curfew, with amazing bars and amazing atmosphere, a form of defiance in itself. And of course, then there's the people you might meet, I'm my name is John Sweeney. You're going to see this guy from time to time. Short explanation, he's not supposed to be here. And we have a simple message for Vladimir Putin. And it goes like this. Vladimir Putin, do, do fuck off! <laughs> that should be the norm. That should be the way of life. But there's plenty that's outside the norm in Kiev and in Ukraine. Not least... So here we go, there's uh, an air raid alert now in Kyiv. During an air raid siren, it's uh, get to the shelters. Um, metro stations, underground stations are generally uh, shelters. And uh, as you might be able to see behind, uh, we do have the good fortune that Kyiv has one of the deepest underground systems in the world. And this is at my dance So a lot of people are coming and going from the station, but you can probably see, and I don't want to focus on people too much uh, to the left and right tends to be kind of women with kids uh, that come down just staying here so very young kids still here we are 20 months later coming down whatever it is 100 meters underground uh, to shelter from air raids in the capital of a modern European city this is what we're meant to be stopping during the shelter while some people were down the platform up here in the concourse as well he was just hanging around it's almost sociable. And after an all too short visit, it was time to take the train back towards the west and back to Lviv. <laughs> and back as well to the local and international volunteers at Lviv Volunteer Kitchen. Stop me. This time, we checked out some other volunteering opportunities too. We're in the Viv Children's Library this morning, so being a little bit quiet, but quiet and silent work here as well, because we're making camouflage nets for the defenders on the front line. All over Lviv, indeed all over Ukraine, you'll find locations like this in so many cities where volunteers come to take a bit of time, maybe a few hours, maybe even a lunch break, just to help make nets for the front line. Another popular volunteer activity is looking after some of the many animals who have been injured or abandoned in the war zone. And in Lviv, the Demivka Animal Sanctuary, just outside the center of the city, is an incredible place for the range of wildlife they look after and care for and rehabilitate.
But this is Ukraine and in the midst of this generosity and assistance to people and animals alike, evil intrudes. And all too often, the most harrowing loss of all. Мені сниться, як знову і знову Гуляємо з тобою по рідному Львову Там пахне весною і сонце сідає На березі річки, якої немає І дивляться леви на тебе ласкаво І варять бажання і запахом кави І вільно на розі між пеклом і раєм У Львові так просто своє не вмирає Дихай місто весни моє Місто весни моє Is it any wonder that there's a market to blow off a little bit of steam? Pin? Oh, shit, that fucking piece of shit. <laughs> Fuck yeah! Fuck you, pretty piece of shit. Let's see the scores and the doors. All right, your turn. Now we gotta see what you did. I see what you did. Ah! Look at this! We got the man for the fucking job! <laughs> if only it was that easy. And with that, we said our farewells to Lviv and Ukraine. <laughs>